as we now discuss the uh, media effects within the media ecology and the way how different means of communication will shape our perspectives and uh, the way how do we approach social reality, let's now move on and focus at the cultivation theory. Just like uh, all the theories uh, devoted to the media effects, it's uh, focusing on uh, the way how media is changing our attitudes and our behavior. But this particular theory uh, was mostly focusing at one uh, one medium, which is television, just like the media ecology approach. Uh, you may say that quite many people nowadays have no TV at home, and thus this is a theoretical approach would be useless, as we are losing our attachment to the television, and we are using different uh, sorts and different means of the communication nowadays. Still, uh, the cultivation theory might be very helpful to understand the media effect on the very radical level of the influence, and as well as this approach highlights the importance of the content itself and its direct influence on the perceptions, rather than on how technology is shaping our view uh, of the reality. So let's take a look. Uh, what was it like? The whole approach was developed by uh, George Gerbner uh, in the 70s, and uh, uh, it was all focusing on the TV, as TV was seen as the dominant force which shapes modern society. The core assumption of the theory is that it predicts not the direct impact of our thinking, but uh, the direct impact on the television, on the way we perceive the world. So it's all about the embedded frames uh, which are transmitted through the television, which we uh, use in order to construct our reality. So the most we know, uh, or at least uh, we think about what we know, we have never experienced personally. And we need to add our experiences in order to have the complete view of the reality. So these stories which appear at the television, uh, they just... Uh, changing uh, the way uh, how we see uh, the missing parts of uh, what's supposed to be in our worldview. Uh, so the stories that animate our cultural environment to reveal, the, first of all, how things work. Well, you might never be a fireman, so you are watching a TV series about firemen and the understanding and perception on the way how people in the fire department would work We come directly from this uh, TV series or it can be a movie. Uh, describe what the things are, the description of the certain processes and the way how different things happen in the different uh, parts uh, which are on the border and away from our experience. Uh, this is quite an important function of the television. Also, the stories from the television, they tell us what we need to do about them. So they add a little bit to our reality and uh, they provide us uh, with an understanding how should we perceive uh, different people uh, within the next upcoming situation of uh, the social reality. For example, you've never been dealing with the police, but you see a lot about the uh, law enforcement uh, TV series, or maybe it can, be, uh, it can be shows, any other shows on the TV. And uh, in this case, particularly dialogues between characters and the representatives of the police uh, would shape your attitudes. And after that, uh, this is the TV series which is navigating you through the difficult situation when you get caught by the police, for example. Hopefully, it would never happen. So, what are the basic assumptions of the theory? The technological advancements make uh, storytelling available in a large scale, and the main source of the TV uh, is the TV. Remember, it was in the 70s, and yes, TV was the, quite the dominant uh, source of the news and source of uh, the entertainment, and TV became quite cheap, so it was everywhere in uh, states, and uh, generally it would go on across the world. Stories present co-construct, uh, so stories which are presented, they co-construct our view of the reality. So we cannot have all the experiences. We need to fill the gaps in our knowledge. Mass media at the same time cultivates attitudes and values which are already presented in culture. So uh, the people who are making the TV series, they kind of get the information from somewhere and uh, this information uh, is just exaggerated or it might be uh, shown with a different focus, where it can be just slightly different, but the dominating, uh, dominating forms of uh, the cultural standards, they would um, uh, re be reproduced uh, through the mass media. 
why TV was chosen for the theory? As uh, First of all, it was fundamentally different from uh, any other sources and forums of the mass media. Uh, it was uh, quite a storyteller and it was interactive, uh, more or less, and it provided and activated uh, as many senses as it was never possible before. And as well, uh, it was uh, quite interesting to see the dramatic shift as uh, television spread really fast and almost 98%, 89% uh, of uh, the American homes uh, had the television by this time. Still, television has uh, limited effects, so these effects can be tracked. So for the purposes of this research, Gardner was conducting a very uh, interesting study while he was tracking how much people are watching TV and what their uh, view and perception of the reality is. First of all, he outlined three categories of the viewers. Heavy viewers who would watch a lot of the TV, uh, live viewers who would be just watching slightly, like uh, less than 10 hours a day, and moderate viewing, uh, viewer, uh, those who can be stuck in between those two categories. So they're not spending too much time, but they're not avoiding the television. After that, he would be comparing the patterns of TV consumption to measure the cultivation di differential, which brought him to the main conclusion of the mean world syndrome. So what is it that? The first thing is the people who were exposed to the TV version of the reality for longer time, so the heavy viewers, uh, would have exaggerated belief in a mean and scary world due to the extensive broadcast of the violent content which was called this mean world syndrome. The study was taken in a few steps and uh, the respondents were asked uh, how many people live in the United States, how many people work in the law enforcement, and during the week, what are the chances of yours to be involved in some type of violence and should people be trusted? Well, as you can predict, uh, the heavy viewers would significantly overestimate the number of people who work in the law enforcement as well as they would underestimate their real-life danger as they consume too much of the violent content and they co-constructed their view of the social reality with this content. So definitely they would not trust much people, but people should be trusted. Uh, what are the other cultivation effects? Uh, there are two uh, effects which Gerbner brings up to describe the way how this uh, cultivation works. Well, the first one is the mainstream effect, uh, which stands for individuals with less direct experience uh, being more affected by the media. And the second one is resonance effect. Uh, individuals with the more direct experience will be affected more by the media. So basically, you will be affected anyway if you know how does it work in the reality or how it doesn't work. But these two names and these two definitions uh, would be helpful in order to provide an explanation of how the cultivation process happens. Um, the research and method. Uh, as an individual, you might be interested in how uh, and what parts of uh, the reality uh, are con constructed for you by the media. And maybe you can do this a little research on yourself, first of all. Uh, but uh, for the scholars, the most common variables in the cultivation framework are the media use, perceptions, behavioral intentions, and personal experiences. So you need to measure all four of them and then uh, try to seek for the correlation uh, between media exposure and the other dependent variable. It's usually conducted through uh, several steps and uh, first you need to identify the stable pattern within the TV content, or in the case of the Gebner it was uh, the violence, and you go through the institutional process analysis as uh, there are some people who would uh, manage the way how content appears to the publics and those gatekeepers who actually will build up the agenda for, uh, for, for the upcoming uh, media uh, trans, uh, translation and uh, uh, the message system analysis is when you focus on the message itself and you to try uh, you're trying to break it down into particles to understand what is uh, the major focus of this message and then you see the cultivation analysis basically this correlation between dependent variable and independent variable so uh, does the uh, TV or any other type of content uh, consumption influence the way how we think about the reality. Uh, so to summarize here, cultivation theory assumes that there is a strong power of the TV on our reality, yet uh, 
yet it can be done with uh, any other medium. Doesn't have to be TV or only cultivation of the violent content. The primary message of the TV does not reflect the reality. But uh, here we need to question what is the reality and how are the social norms, standards and attitudes cultivated through the variety of media sources uh, actually work and how do they shape our society.